Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts today. We're talking TDI high pressure fuel pumps. All right, you guys have been asking me for a long time to do a failed parts video on the TDI high pressure fuel pumps. It's a part that's really hard to get a hold of, but somehow luckily the stars aligned and I got two for us to talk about today. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of great DIY videos. These guys put a lot of work into getting out a ton of information for you guys. They're a great part of the community, both the Volkswagen community and our community. So check them out at shopdap.com. All right, so this high pressure fuel pump made by Bosch started in Volkswagens, in the US anyway, in 2009 then kind of carried on to the 14 model year Jetta Golf Beetle. Uh, the TDI Passat has a slightly different pump, but it's, it's very similar to the point where we could probably call it the same pump. The newer generation I think is a little bit different, but this pump design is very similar on all of our TDIs from 09 and up, and the failures basically apply just the same. So what is a high pressure fuel pump? Well, it's one of those really cool parts that tells you exactly what it is and exactly what it does right in the name. It's a pump that creates high pressure fuel needed for these common rails to run. It's about 800 bar that this pump creates. It takes the volume of fuel that's pumped from the in-tank pump, then the auxiliary electric pump if it has it, and jacks the pressure way, way up in order to let the injectors open and do their job. So how does the high pressure fuel pump work? Well, it's a pump that's driven by the timing belt. You can see it right here. It's towards the front of the engine. There's a gear that's mounted right here. It's actually two pieces, which allows the external gear to rotate independent from the piece that goes over this conical part right here. It does bolt on the pump in the vehicle sits sort of like this. We have our fuel in and return lines here. And then this is the out portion that goes to the fuel rail and then to the injectors and into the engine. I have this pump taken apart inside. We have a lobe that is driven by the gear. This lobe as it rotates with the timing belt is actually gonna rotate that way as it rotates with the timing belt. It pushes this plunger in and out, which is what creates the high pressure fuel. It sort of sits like this. And then as this rotates, it pushes this in and out. And then your fuel is delivered out here. There's actually a roller on it. So it looks, it looks just like this. It is also timed along with the timing belt. So if you do replace one of these and you don't get the timing right, it can cause weird things to happening with the fuel pump. All right, so how do they fail? Well, I've actually seen them fail in two different ways. We have the catastrophic way and the not catastrophic way. Let's talk about the catastrophic way first. That's where something inside of the guts of this pump comes apart and actually blows metal through the entire fuel system. I say catastrophic because if this happens, we're replacing basically everything that fuel touches inside of the vehicle. I've also seen them fail not so catastrophically where perhaps this valve that's bolted to the top like this fails. And the great thing about that is, is it's just a simple pump replacement because from Volkswagen, this valve is not available separately. That metal that gets blown through the entire fuel system from this pump can come from a number of different situations happening. I've seen it come from a vehicle being misfueled, putting a full tank of gasoline in it, running it till the car doesn't run anymore, generally does damage to the high pressure fuel pump. And along with the misfueling of just putting gas in it, we could be dealing with a poor fuel quality. Let's say it's a lot of high concentration of water in the fuel. We can be dealing with no fuel where the pump was cranked with no fuel in it, causing the pump to be ran dry. That'll cause the pump to come apart, as well as algae or bacteria buildup can cause damage to the pump. In the non-catastrophic way, it's generally an electrical failure of this valve or something else inside the pump. You know, we could be, there's a lot of little passages. We could be dealing with a clogging situation. Perhaps the screen and this little return piece gets all, all clogged up or something weird or smashed in or something. So there's a number of different situations that can cause this pump to fail you, but the absolute most, most, most common is complete catastrophic failure. All right, so what are gonna be some symptoms of a failing or failed high pressure fuel pump? The catastrophic failure and the not catastrophic failure have two completely different situations but both of them almost always result in a check engine light relating to low fuel pressure. Now, if we have a catastrophic failure, it's almost always a no start condition. 
almost all of the vehicles get towed in and won't start. Sometimes you'll get it where the car will kind of run, sort of, but they run completely terrible in a way that you never want to drive it on the road. In the non-catastrophic failure space, we again are going to get a check engine light. We might see a little bit of a hiccup in, uh, in drivability, maybe. I've seen it go both ways. I've seen it straight be a check engine light. The car drives fine. It's just losing some kind of fuel pressure signal. You know, if it's the valve, it can be losing signal from the pump. And sometimes it comes in the form of low fuel rail pressure, or actually it'll set faults for one of the other sensors in the fuel rail because it expects to see a certain amount of fuel pressure. It doesn't see it, so it triggers one of the two sensors on the end of the fuel rail. How do we diagnose a failed high pressure fuel pump. Well, in the catastrophic space, it's super easy. You know, we have our high pressure fuel pump sitting in the car like this. What we'll do is we will unbolt this valve right here. We'll look inside. Almost always you'll see metal contamination inside of the fuel. You'll also see inside of this valve, this screen right here will be completely clogged up and have you know, a ton of metal just embedded into the screen. When it comes to the non-catastrophic failure, it gets a little bit trickier. It's almost a process of elimination where we eliminate all the other things but the high pressure fuel pump, and it has to be that. We start by checking low side fuel pressure. We make sure that we have fuel delivery up to the engine compartment. We make sure that the fuel filter is not clogged. We make sure all of the low side fuel things are working right. We make sure the sensors are working right and basically eliminate everything else but the high pressure fuel pump. There is special tools to check the high pressure fuel side on these engines, but it's not something that most dealerships have, so we sort of have to work in a little bit different way and eliminate all the other things going on with the high pressure fuel system other than the pump, and then that only basically leaves the pump. So is this a DIY repair or not? Well, because it's driven by the timing belt, that means the timing belt does have to be loosened or removed in order to replace this pump. So if it's just a straight failure of the pump, not catastrophically, it's not a terribly hard DIY. If it's a catastrophic failure where we have metal throughout the entire fuel system, it becomes a lot less of a DIY. There are a fair amount of special tools required to lock the crankshaft, lock the camshaft, lock the high pressure fuel pump. If there's an injector socket that you're going to need. You will need a scan tool for either one, whether it's catastrophic or not, because you have to bleed the fuel system. If you end up replacing injectors because of damage to those, you're going to need to code the injectors to the ECM. That requires a scan tool. So if you do decide to take this on as a DIY, remember there are special tools and you will need a scan tool. In the best case scenario, the pump itself is $600 plus, uh, plus labor, or if you're going to DIY it, remember it does require a fair amount of special tools. The labor on one of these is four to five hours, something like that. So it's not a small amount of labor either. If you're anywhere near a timing belt interval and you have to replace this pump, Put a timing belt, tensioner, water pump, the whole deal on your car. It's going to be a ton of overlap. It's going to make your life a lot easier, especially if you're paying someone to do it. You won't have to pay that labor all over again in another, say, 10,000 miles. On the worst case scenario side, if we have catastrophic failure, metals embedded into the entire fuel system, it gets really expensive. You're talking over $3,800 in parts alone. That doesn't include any labor. We're replacing basically everything that fuel touches, depending on how bad it is. Most of the time we won't replace the tank. The in-tank pump depends on how bad it was, but all the rest of it pretty much gets replaced. So that's a really expensive, you know, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 plus repair. It's come down quite a bit since the early generation of these when we were doing them in 2009 and 2010. But again, it's still crazy expensive. In fact, if you want to know more about exactly what we do when high pressure fuel pumps fail catastrophically, the in-depth look at all the parts and everything that we replace and how that works, Jason from Engineering Explained and I have a collaboration video coming out very soon. It may already be out. If it's out, I'm linking it here. If it's not, stay tuned for that. I'll be sure to let you guys know. Check that out. Him and I go in depth in the entire fuel system and talk about all the things that happen when we miss fuel or have high pressure fuel pump catastrophic failure. There is no average mileage. I've seen them at very low miles. I've replaced one of these at 4,000 miles on a brand new car. I've seen them well over 100,000, 140, 160,000 miles have failures. So there is no, they generally fail it. This mileage is all over the board, you know, the whole range of mileage. Remember, some of these are under a warranty extension. There are very specific criteria. Uh, if you want to know whether your vehicle is covered, be sure to contact your local dealership, give them your VIN, 
and they can give you all the information about extended warranty coverage on your vehicle. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, please post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at homomechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Um, no drink of the day, beer of the day, none of that, but uh, got a lot of diesel fuel pumps. <laughs>